Hey there folks, my name is Dan Goodman and I want to welcome you to another rousing edition of our Stormwind Studios succinct held online remote training sessions or simply shorts. This is the 10th short in the Wireless LAN Essentials series of shorts and it takes a more in-depth look at Cisco Wireless LAN controllers. Now for those of you guys who have been following along with the other videos and I know you have otherwise you wouldn't be here this is yet again going to be another infomercial for all things Cisco. Specifically, we're going to talk about the Cisco Wireless LAN controller models, the web-based GUI, and some of the deployments they are most effective in. Now, your goal to take away from this is to know two to three key features about each controller model, plus a basic familiarity with the Express setup and the controller GUI for basic configurations. For those of you who are more GUI inclined, for lack of a better term, uh, this particular device, component, piece of equipment, whatever you want to call it, places more of a premium on a GUI than the command line interface, which sometimes it's good to not have to look at that boring black and white screen for hours and hours and hours on end. Not that I've never done that before, but it's nice to know. When we talk about these Cisco wireless LAN controllers, as you can see here, the controller models are going to be categorized based upon the deployment needs. Choosing amongst them basically boils down to headquarters and branch needs, the number of access points you need to support, and the number of clients you need to support, which is something folks tend to forget. Now, the models will vary in the access points supported from as few to 25 to 6,000 per controller. Of course, you will need to factor in things like redundancy and failover because we all know that at some point, somewhere down the road, something bad is going to happen and we wish we would have had a backup controller. So factor that into your deployment as well. First up is going to be the Virtual Wireless LAN Controller or the VWLC. This follows the standard virtual machine infrastructure to provide controller services that is nearly hardware agnostic. It is intended for small to mid-sized deployments because it supports 200 access points in FlexConnect, Mesh, or Office Extend modes, 3,000 tags, and 6,000 clients at 500 megabits per second throughput. We get to take advantage of clean air, RRM, guest services, and bonjour. Uh, these are also some of the supported special features. The main advantages that we get from the virtual controller is that the, we get hardware selection flexibility, reduced cost, space, and overhead, and mutually exclusive instances can run on the same underlying platform. So we can have five controllers running on the same piece of hardware, if you will. Now, the 2500 series is once again intended for small to mid-sized deployments. It supports 75 access points in FlexConnect, Mesh, or Office Extend modes, 500 tags, and 1,000 clients at 1 gigabit per second throughput. We get clean air, we get LAG, RRM, DTLS, video stream, guest services, ABC, and bonjour as supported special features. Now on this particular model, two of the four ports will provide PoE to its connected access points. Moving on to the 5508 series, this is intended for mid-size to large deployments, supports 500 access points in FlexConnect, Central, Mesh, or Office Extend modes, 5,000 tags, 7,000 clients at 8 gigabit per second throughput. It supports the same special features as the 2500 series. I'm going to use that to my advantage here, so if you need to review those features, rewind it here a couple of seconds. The 5520 series is basically a bigger version of the 5508, but it's been optimized for 802.11ac Wave 2, intended for mid-size to large deployments, supports 1,500 access points in FlexConnect, Central, Mesh, or Office Extend modes, and that's four zeros, 20,000 clients. I was missing a comma there, my apologies. Uh, at 20 gigabit per second throughput. It supports the same special features as both the 2500 and the 5508 series. The 5760 series is the first iOS-based wireless LAN controller. Now, the previously discussed models are all 
Air OS based controllers. So basically a different internal operating system, if you will. Mid to large enterprises supports 1,000 access points in central mode, 1,000 tags, and 2,000 clients at 60 gigs per second, gigabits per second, let me say that correctly, throughput, supporting the same special features as the models we just got done discussing. The Flex 7500 series brings increased flexibility and scalability to branch locations using Flex Connect, hence the name Flex in the name. This supports 6,000 access points in Flex Connect, mesh with some limitations, and Office Extend, 50,000 tags, 64,000 clients at one gigabit per second throughput, supporting the same special features as the models we've already discussed. The 8510 series is a highly scalable, highly flexible for large enterprises as well as service providers. It supports 6,000 access points in Flex Connect, Mesh, and Office Extend, 50,000 tags, 64,000 clients, 10 gigabit per second throughput, supporting the same special features as the previously discussed models. The 8540 series is basically a faster version of the 8510, 40 gigs per second versus 10 gigs per second. A little more to it than that, but the other features are best left for our higher tier courses, which we certainly hope you check out somewhere down the road. That aside, it is optimized for 802.11ac Wave 2. Then we're left with the Catalyst 3650 and the 3850 series switches with wireless controllers. This is essentially Cisco's converged access that basically converges, hence the name, wired and wireless gear into one physical infrastructure. This is intended for small to large enterprises with support for 25 access points deployed in central mode for the 3650, 50 access points deployed in central mode for the 3850. Both models support 1,000 tags, 1,000 clients for the 3650, 2,000 clients for the 3850, ranging from 20 to 40 gigabits per second. Now, it supports the same special features as all the other controllers we've discussed, but it also operates in one of the two modes specifically intended for roaming purposes, mobility agent and mobility controller, which gets abbreviated as MA and MC, respectively. The MA is essentially a roaming employee, if you think about it. Now, this is going to depend upon a mobility controller for management and policy, it's kind of like the old school backup domain controller, if you kind of get that analogy there. The mobility controller provides mobility management for roaming events. This is essentially the boss of roaming for a given network. So typically we have multiple mobility agents, but we only have one boss of those mobility that serves in that mobility controller role. This is the central point of contact for management as well as policy enforcement. It's going to run the iOS controller module known as the wireless controller module or WCM. Now the basic configurations of your wireless LAN controllers, uh, the current controller models support what's called the wireless LAN controller express setup option in both wired and wireless deployments. When you're talking about the wired setup, and this is you know physically connecting it to it, there has to be a physical cable that gets connected to the controller. The client is essentially going to receive its IP address from the controller, and you would connect to the GUI using the IP address of 192.168.1.1. Of course, you can change that somewhere down the road whenever you get to it. Wireless setup is where you essentially have an access point that is connected to the controller, and that access point is broadcasting the SSID named Cisco Air Provision. In this case, the client would connect to that SSID. From there, the client can access the GUI using that same 192.168.1.1 address. The actual setup, initial configurations, advanced configurations, those are all covered in our higher tier courses, which of course we certainly hope you check out somewhere down the road. That being said, that is all we have here for this short 
Thank you for taking the time here to watch our short on all things wireless LAN essentials. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you are notified of these new shorts shortly after they become available. Take care.